to inject or not to inject salmon sperm underneath the surface of our skin is the question of the hour and one that I can assure you William Shakespeare himself never once asked himself that question. But it's 2024 and everything goes, so let's find out together. Who the hell am I? I'm Dr. Shireen Idris, a board-certified dermatologist, and you've landed on Pillow Talk Derm, where we do this every Saturday at 10 a.m. And if you're new here, we cover everything from salmon sperm to viral trending topics, skincare ingredients, cosmetic products, procedures, and even medical concerns. So do what's good for you. Subscribe, like this video, and let me know what you want to learn about next week. But if you're not new here, welcome back. And I am answering a question that you guys have been asking me in the comments for quite some time now, probably the past two to three months. What do I think about the salmon sperm facial? So let's jump in. But first, why is it even called a salmon sperm facial? Because that is dégueulasse. Quite nasty if you ask me. But the reality is social media loves the nasty thing and social media loves to create virality out of things that are considered just gross. And so salmon sperm facial, although catchy in title and name, is not exactly accurate when it comes to what it actually is. Those who have been referring to it, to it as a salmon DNA treatment have actually been much more accurate, but that is just not as sexy as a salmon sperm facial. And so that would have never, you know, caught like wildfire. But the far less viral term is actually polynucleotides. Let me explain. Polynucleotides are used in injectable skin booster treatments that originated in South Korea. And Regeran is one of the most popular and well-known polynucleotide treatments derived from salmon DNA. And where did they get that salmon DNA? Ding, 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 the salmon sperm. How did they get the salmon DNA from the salmon sperm? through a series of biochemical processes that break down the structure of your salmon sperm and the cellular structure, allowing for the DNA to be separated from the other cellular components and allowing you to then get the polynucleotides, which are then used in Regerand. Now, I mentioned Regerand is a skin booster. But not all skin boosters are created equal. If you are in Europe watching this video, you might be thinking Profilo because that has been marketed as a skin booster for quite some time now. Profilo is a hyaluronic acid skin booster, very different than a polynucleotide skin booster because they come from two very different things. But that is how the term salmon sperm facials came about because of the fact that what is being used is derived from the DNA that is extracted from the sperm of salmon. Now, why salmon, you may ask? I agree. Couldn't they have picked a sexier animal? Because if we're going to be doing this, can it at least be something more aspirational than salmon? Like, I don't know, a cheetah? I don't know, leopard? Something like that, sexy, you know, pretty? No. Salmon sperm was chosen because salmon sperm and the DNA of salmon is basically the most biocompatible with human skin. That is why salmon sperm was used. In fact, all organisms, the DNA of all living organisms have polynucleotides, but not all living organisms are biocompatible with human DNA. And so salmon was the lucky one that was chosen. And in Korea, they even have this type of ingredient in skincare. It's not just something that is reserved for facials or for an injectable treatment underneath the surface of your skin. In fact, it can be found over the counter in the form of polydeoxyribonucleotides, PDRN. It's all the rage in Korea in terms of skincare. And topically, the claims are that it has soothing effects and low level anti-inflammatory effects that is gonna leave your skin looking calmer, quieter, more at peace. But internally, it is said to have more benefits. There is some preliminary research on the potential benefits of salmon DNA for the skin. And there was one study where they reviewed papers published in the last 25 years on PubMed, where they looked up polydeoxyribonucleotides and wound healing. And they found that PDRN does have a 
beneficial effect when it comes to wound healing, allowing your skin to heal if you have a wound by activating your blood vessels and all of those cells to come in to allow your skin to heal and regenerate better. The two studies, I'll link them below if you guys want to click through them and read them. In 2010, there was another study done in the International Journal of Cosmetic Science that found that the DNA from salmon sperm can help increase the elasticity, collagen level, and production of hyaluronic acid compared to controls. The problem though with this study is that it was only 20 people and it was a 12-week study where the 20 people were divided into two groups of 10. And unfortunately, that number of that N was just, in my opinion, not high enough. So more robust scientific evidence supporting its use in facial treatments, I think is still needed as the data is still limited. Which, and to go back to Regeran, Regeran is classified in South Korea as a skin booster due to its ability to improve skin quality. It's been around since at least 2014. So it's been around for almost a decade now. I'm not sure if the whole decade has been in use on the market in South Korea, but it's been around for quite some time in South Korea. And it is a biostimulator, meaning it's going to help trigger your own skin's natural healing and rejuvenation process, which is great. Kind of like Sculptra helps to stimulate collagen production, this is going to help allowing your body to heal itself. And so the methods that they use to inject this stuff under the surface of your skin is either through a single series of injections or through their gun method, where they take a ding, 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 multi-needle approach to inject it at multiple points underneath the surface of the skin. Now, I have had a few patients who have gone to South Korea and have had this done, and it is not for the faint of heart. Apparently, it can be extremely, extremely painful in certain areas, and it can lead to intense swelling and bruising. But that is the name of the game when it comes to injectables. The extent of the swelling, though, depends on what is being injected underneath the surface of the skin. And apparently, this one can really leave big bumps and welts. But it has benefits because it's been done for now nearly a decade over there. And the three biggest benefits that are surrounding this treatment are that it, number one, stimulates collagen production, which is always great by stimulating your fibroblasts, which are the cells that are responsible for producing collagen and elastin. It also helps increase your collagen production, which improves your skin's firmness. Number two is that it enhances the hydration of your skin. It has very strong water binding properties that allows your skin to retain moisture, which you end up losing as you get older over time, which leads to better hydration and plumper, dewier looking skin. And number three, it has anti-inflammatory effects that helps to soothe the skin and reduce redness and irritations. So people are doing this to minimize swelling, redness, look plumper, look dewier, and to help promote collagen production longer over time. But now that we have all of this info, are there other risks that we should know about? Yes, the swelling. Yes, the pain. Can you have an allergic reaction because it's derived from fish? It's not really related, but if you have a really strong fish allergy, it's always safer to patch test first with a small injection in a very small amount underneath the guise of your physician just to be safe. But there's really no cross-contamination there, but anything you're injected can cause an allergic reaction. So allergic reactions have been observed, not necessarily just due to the fact that you have a fish allergy. Infections. Anytime we inject anything under the surface of the skin, an infection can happen. And so although it can happen with this, it is not a specific risk associated with red geran or salmon sperm facials. But unknown long-term effects is one that I want to sit on because 10 years sounds like a long time, but do we remember silicone? Silicone was all the rage in the 90s and 20 to 30 years later, people's faces started looking distorted. Um, so long-term effects is still lacking and everything great was once new, but not everything new-ish is great. And last, salmon sperm facials are not FDA approved. Now, the FDA is not the holy grail agency of the world and it's not the most ethical agency of the world, fine. But in the US at least, it's not FDA approved. 
So the full range of potential risks and side effects may not have been fully understood or documented, and they cannot guarantee full safety. And because it is not FDA approved as a treatment, there's no legal way to purchase the stuff to inject into your face, which then puts into question the ethics of your provider. Where are they getting the salmon sperm from? Are they fishing it and like extracting it themselves in their kitchen? Or are they buying from the crystal meth dealer on the corner? Or are they buying it from their friend in South Korea who's shipping it? Or are they buying it from a distributor on Amazon who might be shady or not? The reality is, how are they guaranteeing what they're injecting into your face is legit? Because at the end of the day, they're putting their own medical license on the line. And if they don't have a medical license, let's say it's an esthetician who's injecting you, A, estheticians are not technically legally allowed to break the surface of your skin and inject anything into your skin. But if they don't have a license, they have nothing to lose. So that's even more worrisome because if they're just trying to make a quick buck, they'll try to make a quick buck with nothing to lose is a dangerous place to be. And I think that is a major red flag. Now, if you're going to South Korea and you're going to the most reputable place over there, God bless, go ahead, try it out, let us know, keep us posted. But in the U.S. at least, be smart about the treatments that you're getting and understand what is legal and what isn't. Because when something isn't quite clear cut and legal, it puts into question the ethics of your provider. And that is a much bigger and broader discussion than what we are covering today. So I hope this video was helpful. I wanted to also touch on exosomes very, very lightly. Like salmon sperm facials, exosomes have been used in skincare and it's a relatively new hot topic. It has limited research and it also has a lack of FDA approval. People are injecting exosomes as well for hair growth, rejuvenation, cellular renewals, fine lines, wrinkles, etc. But it is very, very novel and it's not FDA approved. So if a physician is injecting exosomes, it also puts into question their ethics and how they're getting it. But we can answer the exosome questions another day. If you guys are interested, let me know below. Put the questions in there. I'll see if there's an interest to do a video on exosomes. But I'm just going to end it with this, that everything great was once new. Not everything new is great. And if you're living in a country where something is not viewed as quote unquote legal, does that mean that it's bad? No, not necessarily. But if something isn't legal, the question then becomes, if the service is being offered, how is your provider getting the stuff to do the service? And that is a shadier question because there's a lot of shades of gray in this question and it just makes you really wonder about your own provider and to make sure that you are in the right and safe hands. So I'm gonna leave you guys with that food for thought. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you guys next Saturday.